You're listening to episode one of the Speakeasies. We hope you guys enjoy this one. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the inaugural episode of the Speakeasies. Uh, I'm Kate Petrie. I'm Grady Thompson. I'm Polo De Los Santos. And we've got a lot on the docket for us to talk about today. So let's just jump right into it. I... I'd like to begin by saying that cashews are clearly the superior nut, and no one will ever convince me otherwise. Can I just say, this is not the official stance of the Speakeasies podcast. I think it is. Uh, I believe it is. Well, you know, I don't think... No, I disagree with that. I agree with Grady. That's not not the official stance. What what would you have the official stance be? I think... Well, I'm just going to say what I think is the best nut, and that's the almond. Thank you. What do you think it is, I, Grady? I can't believe I, this. I one. also believe the almond is a superior nut, you know? Um, it's just... Oh, okay, first of all, we got we got taste, okay? If you just want to have a neutral, you know, a neutral taste, just eat an almond. You can go in yogurt, you can go in cereal, you can go in all your favorite ice creams and desserts. It's really, it's really something. Cashews don't offer but, that. You know how many times okay, I've had but, a sour cashew? Okay. However... You know, bitter cashew. I okay, but the almond. You said completely neutral in taste. When I want to eat a nut, I want taste in the nut. I don't want the nut to have to lean on other foods like yogurt or ice cream or like a pie or something or honey to be able to like be enjoyed by me. You know, the cashew can offer that just by itself. Well, question: Would you ever eat a cashew with yogurt? No. I mean, I haven't tried it. I, I guess I'll, I'll try it, but, no. you know. I, Let me just tell you, I, don't try it. You know what you should try? It, <laughs> Pardon? Have you tried cashews cashews and yogurt? I, you know, I, 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 I can't say I have because I wouldn't want to. I would not want to. Polo, do you have something to say on this? Well, I think what Grady means by a neutral nut is that almonds, unlike other nuts, can be both sweet and sour. You know, you can have a... I mean, not sour, not sour, salty, my bad. You can have a salty almond and a sweet almond. Cashews can only be salty. That's true. <clears throat> I would never eat a raw cashew. I like cashews, don't get me wrong. I'm not bagging on cashews. Well, I sort of am. But like, it's just because I've had a lot of bad experiences with cashews. Relatively bad experiences with cashews, of course. So, so you think your personal feelings are getting in the way of your judgment which is clearly incorrect. Uh, well, considering this is all opinion based, I think you know personal feelings ought to be taken into account. You know, if we were discussing science stuff, I wouldn't talk about my feelings per se. But you know, when we're talking about the best kind of nut, we gotta take into our feelings into account. We gotta take our personal experiences. I have had bad experiences with cashews. Well, just taking it, just taking it from a logical standpoint. Almonds are superior because they have the most versatility in ty- in terms of use. You know, you can have them for breakfast, you can have them for lunch and dinner, but they also provide a good source of protein. So if one chooses to sustain themselves on, on almonds completely, they can do so. But the cashews, is, it's the same I don't with think cashews. you can take, you could totally take the stand. sustain yourself on only cashews. They got those proteins. All, I those think carbs, almonds have healthy fats. enough pro almonds. <laughs> I don't think they have enough protein. I don't you think know, cashews right, have okay, enough protein. Okay, now I gotta look you know, this almonds, up. Cashews nutrition facts. Almonds are a great thing to eat before you do practices, like musical practice or your sports practices. I know I've, I've seen stuff about how it helps your brain, helps you retain that information. You know, it's something that is, it's just so versatile. It's honestly the most utilitarian yet delicious food that there might be. Or I could be totally wrong here. I mean, I think you also have to look at what we can do in terms of milk. As you know, we can I totally forgot create that. almond milk. I know there is cashew milk. Is there cashew milk? Cashew milk? Yeah, there is cashew but milk. But who drinks cashew milk? Um, who drinks cashew milk? Okay. Well, the, the fact that I knew about almond milk but not cashew milk is just a sign. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's a good point. No one wants to drink cashew milk, okay? I've heard uh, almond I, milk is very okay, good. But but is there almond fruit? Does almond fruit exist? Does cashew fruit exist? Yes, cashew fruit does exist. Well, 
I, I'm, why I'm would actually it, not why would you want cashew fruit? Hold on. Because it's delicious. I, I had a friend who had cashew fruit once. Said it was great, you know? Uh, See, even if, right. even if even if you say that the cashew, the cashew itself does not go in yogurt or ice cream, I an argument could be made that cashew fruit could fill that purpose as well. You know how... You, you, have you guys seen The Yellow Submarine? The, the no. movie? You know how no. it has that... Cra- no, you have not. No, I have not. You know how it... Well, it has all this crazy animations and this crazy characters and a cashew fruit looks just like that. Like, it looks like it should be yelling at a cartoon John Lennon or something. <laughs> like, I'm just looking at this. I, I agree with that. I haven't even seen a cashew fruit polo. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> well, I'm looking oh, at are? it as okay. well. It's like, this one, I know we can't okay. show images on this thing, but like... And I, I do want to say one thing about that, Cade. A cashew fruit is no longer a nut. <clears throat> okay, but the, the cashew... Mm. The cashew no, kiddo. No, that is associating associating it with the fruit does not. I think I'm allowed to I, do I, that. I just don't think. I would I would allow it with the almond if the almond had a fruit, right? But right. there well, there is no to, almond well, is, fruit. Well, that is easy to say when you are a proponent of the, of the cashew. Look, I also want you to look at a cartoon almond. <laughs> it just 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 think of a cartoon almond. It sounds like think like... of how think of how grumpy that thing could be, honestly. <laughs> Well, that it, would just it, be could, like a, it would be more likely to yell at John Lennon than a cartoon cashew fruit. Okay, I'll concede that's probably true. Okay, I I think it would just look like an old raisin. By the way, <laughs> an old raisin, an old hard brown raisin. You know, I I want to add something here. I think we're we're discussing almonds and cashews, but a very good good opponent is peanuts. That's true. I think I think peanuts also have a very good very good versatility in terms of what kind of nut they are they can be both a sweet and a salty you know, nut it's true we use it all the time you got you have peanut butter you know you get how do you beat that how do you beat that that's iconic like, you know I, I don't know you also have like the uh those memories from your childhood of go going to baseball games with your dad and he's got those those weird peanut things right that you get in the stands and you have to actually crack them open and then the shell gets everywhere. Oh yeah. That that's fun. That's like nostalgia right there. And and peanuts are a more well known nut, I think, than either almonds or cashews. Right? That is true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, there's also we also have to consider different cultures' use of these nuts. I, I was just about to say, you know, can you think of a cultural culturally specific use for almonds off the top of your head i can't uh, i can't but we also have to remember i'm not good at other cultures so. yeah <laughs> polo you're the only non-white person here i cannot think well, of any know. other uses of yeah, the almond yeah. in different N- cultures. neither can i and I, honestly cashews i can't either but peanuts you know we've got that that thai peanut sauce i'm pretty sure which is exactly. actually a thing sauce. Which isn't just Americanized, I hope. You, you can go to a, uh, an ethnic store and find the sealed, vacuum-sealed bag of those peanuts, but I don't see any vacuum-sealed almonds, you know? Uh, I, I, I don't you know. know what's interesting? I'm looking this up. According to the Almond History page, the almond is related... There's an Almond History page. Well, apparently. Huh. Apparently it's well, related to the cherry and the peach. Pretty interesting, right? Can you say that about cashews? Well, I mean, I don't think so. well, I mean, if if you compare the cashew fruit to then the cherry, and what what the peach you said? Yes, the peach. And I cherry. think I think the cherry, and the peach are very strong flavors. The cherry especially. And I, I don't know anything about the cashew fruit. I would like to be enlightened on that, then, Kate. Uh, you know, I I myself have not tried cashew fruit, but I I had the friend who has, uh, but. I could I could not speak it, it okay here we go it says uh the cashew apple uh there's a drink made from it, it has a very refreshing taste uh having a hint of mango uh green pepper and um some grapefruit just a hint you know I I personally I I I would I would drink that man if, if that comes it. from the cashew apple look it's not like I'm I bagging think... on cashews here I would try that for sure and I'd probably have a good time drinking it but that doesn't make it the best nut. 
that's like saying that's like saying that um, pumpkin seeds are the best type of seeds you can eat because the pumpkins taste good, you know. But now we're going into a whole different conversation, just seeds and seeds. Polo, I'll let you take over. Uh, well, I mean, if we're gonna go away from that, I don't wanna, I don't wanna um get back on that. But I was just about to say, the cashew apple seems like it would be a more subdued taste. Whereas what, like I said, the cherry and the peach are very strong, distinct flavors. Whereas the cashew apple just m- kind of melds other flavors like mango mm. and, um, that's true. And, uh, whatever, whatever it is you said, how good it would be to have cherry and almonds together. All right. Sorry. I was, I know mm. I just losing my mind over here. I think that's a good place to, uh, smoothly transition into uh some fast fast food submission statements fast food fast food oh boy okay we're gonna have fun with this one all right so let, let me tell the background story to this i don't even i think it was yeah a couple days ago my family and i were road tripping to uh san diego because some of my mom's friends from grad school were down there so we just wanted to see them and I got to thinking about company mission statements, which are very helpful. And by I the way. started, which which are very helpful. I've I've read some very good mission statements, help me decide where to buy things, right? And I started thinking, what the heck would fast food places mission statements be like? Like, literally, what what's the what what is the mission of a place that makes vaguely Mexican food? You know, what 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 good do you hope to do? in the world. So we started looking these up. I think my favorite was a uh, KFC's mission statement, which I'm going to try to find right now. It I you know, I was I was sitting there, I was trying to <laughs> I was actually roasting them. I was like sitting there like so what is the mission statement going to be? Is it going to be like to sell food? I mean like that's it. Like that that would be the lamest mission statement I've ever read. Like you can only go so far right? without it being like uh, a lie at that point, you know. A lie. So, so I read I read this KFC mission statement, and it says to sell food in a fast, friendly environment <laughs> that appeals to pride conscious, health minded no. consumers. Wait, discuss. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Well, I don't. Okay. Did you just say? I think. It, was, okay. Is the KFC? Okay, Gertie. Health. Yes. It, yeah. Yeah. This is to sell food. In a fast, friendly environment that appeals to pride-conscious, health-minded consumers. Yeah. That's... Okay, I think I think you guys object to the health-minded consumer part of that. And I was going to say, while KFC fried chicken might not be physically healthy for your mm-hmm. for your for your body, I think it's very healthy for your mental state. <laughs> I think that's what they're trying to get to with the health-minded consumer. They're not trying to make healthy food in the in the common sense of healthy healthy food i think they're trying to go for the mental state you know when you get a bucket of that's kfc true. you feel good that's, eating that's it. a good point i would have not i think that's of. what they're trying you know what to get i say, I say get we to. break down this mission statement from piece by piece so so what okay. could you say that first but, line uh okay yeah here we go to sell food in a fast, okay, friendly so first environment. Of all, they're achieving the fact that they're selling food. So mission accomplished. You know, it's a fast environment, considering, you know, relatively fast. So, you know, they did that. Is it friendly? I don't know. I mean, I think it's just about as... Well, I don't know. That yeah. differs from... I mean, it depends on the location. Yeah, given location. I'll, yeah. I'll, so I'll, the, I'll the give, the give it to them. The controversy comes I'll in the give next it to line. Them. Uh, this, this is my favorite part. That appeals to pride-conscious, health-minded consumers. Okay, what, let me just say, when I think pride in my food, I, I don't think KFC. Like, when I'm, when I'm proud of what I eat, it's either something that I've made myself or something at, like, this super high-end gourmet restaurant that I'm going to. It's, it's not KFC. I go to KFC... When it's like Sunday afternoon and it's totally on a whim and I'm going to eat it and I'm going to probably feel horrible about myself because I ate too much and it's not healthy for my body. And I, I just don't understand how somebody who's conscious of their pride would willingly go out 
to eat at KFC. I think, I think it's true. Well, I think, I think that, that it goes back to what Polo individual. was saying. The <laughs> only way I can wrap health minded around it was if we do like mental health, because that very because it could very well be considered as like a, as a, for some, as a sort of uh, comfort food. A comfort food, exactly. It could be considered that, but for some, now I think we can all agree that KFC is not a, a healthy dish for your, for your fitness, but. There is that point to be made. Like some people might might like to eat that if they're feeling stressed or something. But do we have other? Are there any other mission well, statements? Yeah, that I, was, particularly... I was gonna say, Cade. You say you wouldn't be proud of eating eating KFC. Then I. It's just not something well, that I can. Then what company would you say you pride. are would be proud of eating? I think <sighs> I kind of see pride conscious. <laughs> I, I kind of see what would pride it be for conscious you, as I would post this on social media and and say, you know, we we're out here eating KFC. Yeah, yeah. get that Instagram food KFC. Post right I there. see some people doing it, but I wouldn't do it personally. But that's just a personal thing. You know, I, yeah. So the you know only what I will time... say is that, like, at least we live in a world like in the United States where we can just get KFC and like five minutes time and get a five dollar bucket like there's that it's like you know i i just remembered <laughs> one thing i do want to bring up about kfc though and pride conscious is if i'm correct ja japan really loves their kfc and like they had some like insane wait list for kfc for christmas if i'm correct yeah i did hear about that that that's like a tradition in japan sometimes the the lines are like two hours long or you have to like make a reservation to go to KFC and get fried chicken so for I Christmas. Think, wow. I think they made pride That's... conscious not if you're just looking yeah. at the US and they it might not be it might not be a proud thing to be eating at KFC, but for other countries it might be, you know? That's true. We gotta look at this from a global standpoint. I <laughs> You know, I yeah, we, yeah. we, no, we got to look at this from a global, global standpoint. Global the KFC go beyond statement. ourselves for a second and look yeah. at the bigger picture. <laughs> I I will say, this company, the, the the website that I'm getting this um KFC mission statement from, they they gave it like a rating, like an evaluation, and they gave it a 0 0.7 out of 4.5. Oh. Um, they they actually they had they had all these categories that they expected the mission statement to mention like and you know i i'm not for this like th th these guys describe themselves as the standard like you like i i don't understand when people say industry standard like who who's judging something but i think these people make some very good points they they as this is like this is this is a this is a food company right it doesn't mention its customers in the mission statements Let's see. Um, mission statements. Uh, let's, it doesn't mention concern for public image in the mission statement or its employees either. And they, they consider these things very important. You know, I think Port it's important. interesting what do you guys think? mission statements are like actually really important in a company. It's how like their employees sort of gear their work. Like, well, is your work ultimately benefiting and working towards our mission statement? So... So, you know, those are really important things they have to take into account because ideally employees in a company will be working towards that standard. And I think if, yes. if in KFC they are truly working towards, you know, what they say in their mission statement, which I think they are to a certain extent, you know, commendations for them. Can it be changed to be a bit more accurate? Maybe. But, you know, there's some validity to that mission state and they are, yeah, they are think, meeting those standards to a certain extent yeah i think when you go to fast food you just want the food and you you just want to leave after you're done it wants you want it to be good food mm -hmm. right so i think if if they give you the food in a fast and friendly environment they accomplish that i mean i'm pretty sure if they keep that simple enough to where every employee can easily do it fast but friendly then there you go because you know if you walk into kfc right now do you want to spend a lot of time there no so you don't you wouldn't really care about then the 
cleanliness of the environment, which I don't think they put in. You just want the f fast food. So I think in terms of that, I think their mission statement's all right. I don't, I don't see much wrong with it. I guess part of me criticizing it is that I'm searching for a more meaningful purpose in these things. And it's just like, I, I keep forgetting. It's just a fast food chain. Does it really need to mean anything, <laughs> right? We're all searching for a greater purpose. Game. Well, that's right. But I, I didn't want to get too philosophical about it. Oh, sorry. That comes, that comes <laughs> later in the show. <laughs> that Fair comes enough. later We've in the been show. talking about um, not KFC, no, KFC's no. mission statement. I want to mention that KFC's, what I think is one of their top rivals, Popeye's, their mission statement, or values, really. All right. Yeah, and... Just one thing that pops out to me oh, right pops away. Pops out. Is it's Popeyes. One, yeah. it's funny. one of their pillars of success is creating memorable experiences. A service experience so good you can't wait to come back to Popeyes. Now I huh. has anybody here ever been to Popeyes? Yes, I have. Yes, I have not, sir. I have. Oh well, do, do you guys the first, remember the experience? I I remember it only because I've been there once. And I rem okay. I I do remember one thing is that I don't I do not think to myself. Man, I want to go back right now. <laughs> Their service was so great. I want to go back. Never, not once have I ever thought of that. I don't know. This is gonna this is gonna sound weird, but like, it actually is a very memorable experience for me when I went to Popeyes because I went with my with some of my family members that I don't see all the time, and like, I don't know. Like, I like that memory, so I sort of associate but Popeyes with good memories personally you know uh, but but um, i i would say that the good memory was not created by popeye's um great service it, it, it was it probably actually the family, was because my know? family specifically one of my members of my family specifically wanted to go to popeye's so if it weren't for popeye's that wouldn't have happened it was specifically because of popeye's hmm. i know you know what one thing i have to say is i i what the what i see is memorable in popeye's is their food they have, I, I think they have some pretty good chicken, all right? But the service, I'm not sure. I just like the music what, did, on their commercial. Did the mission statement mention service? I just forgot. What I, what I remember from their service is it's quite slow compared to, say, their competitor, KFC. And I can wait to come back to Popeye's. <laughs> I, I can't wait to I come think, back. I think Popeye's might have some of the best music of all the commercials, okay? All the commercials. Think about it. I got. I can't think of the genre name off the top of my head, but it's it's good stuff. Of all the but commercials, is it? It's what, like New Orleans. Is that mentioned in the yeah. statement? Yeah, it's like yeah. I well, I I think That's somewhere in their commercials. Well, <sighs> one of their other pillars is build a distinctive brand, and I think they definitely oh, okay hit that. Then, then that has accomplished that. It's like I think we can agree that. If it, your, your company's mission statement, right? Grady mentioned this earlier, is what you should, should you should be working towards, mm -hmm. right? And I feel like we can agree that if it's a good company, it's a good mission statement. Every action that like anybody from the higher levels to the lower levels of your company should be working to fulfill that mission statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would you say they've accomplished? Well, okay. Part of that? Well, then we should look at all five pillars of their success all right. that they, okay. they, they try to say here. And let me read them to you. I've already talked about the building a distinctive brand. And here's what they say about that. At Popeye's, we are all about the food. Our Louisiana heritage gives us a melting pot of food cultures from seven nations to draw on for new recipes and products presenting a superior food platform for flavor innovation that's that's from their website well, and then true. i've already mentioned Ooh, i've I... already mentioned memorable experiences but these other three growing restaurant profits is another pillar okay accelerating quality quality restaurants is another and developing servant leaders oh, oh well that's i'd say a pretty humanitarian I, mission you know servant leadership for... It's actually That's a very company. good goal yeah. to, to go toward. That's like the best kind of leadership in, in what I've seen. It really is. You know, uh, I think it was, what, was it Frederick the First that, that that said, uh, shoot, I can't even remember the quote, something about the, the first servant of the state or something, you know? 
I, I can't believe that I'm comparing Popeyes to Frederick the Great, but if we're looking at this mission statement, was it really that surprising that we've reached this point? I don't know. I mean, I think what's important to say, because Cade was saying, have they made, reached their mission statement? I think what's important to say is that I think ideally a, a company never really reaches their mission statement, but they're always trying to get to that point. You know what I'm saying? Like they're always working towards that. So I don't, I don't know. You're if saying it's like a dream more than an achievable just thing. Just like a work ethic. It's like you don't really, you don't ever reach a work ethic. You just constantly have it. I think that's what I think. To be. Yeah. I think by mission statement hmm. they mean okay. Can we look at our actions and and say, is this building a distinctive brand, creating memorable experience, et cetera, et cetera? And I think they they're doing that. You know. Yeah. I think you know I I can't say it because I've never been to Popeyes, but from what you guys have described, it seems that they're doing pretty well here. Yeah, I think from there. Well, shall we, shall we roll the dice and change the roll change the, dice. the topic? Uh, I know I this is I actually like that. I'm I am gonna roll the dice. What, what's We're next on our? We're gonna roll the dice here. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about. I want to talk about? I have a uh, lot of experience. Wait, okay. With, we got a four. I I, I rolled die. I okay, got we got a four. Um, okay, okay. No, I'm just gonna take the reins. What's on number it. four on our list? What's that? Oh wait, Gra- uh, Grady. Dominus Grady has something to say. Dominant hierarchy of lobsters. Yeah, oh. Grady. I think this is this is your time well, to shine. Yeah. Okay, let me just say I know a lot about this only because of a person named Jordan Peterson he talks about this. He's his clinical psychologist. You may have heard of him, may not have. He's sort of controversial, but we're not gonna have to talk about that right now. But the only reason I know about all of this thing about lobsters is because I read his book, 12 Rules to Life. So lobsters set up dominance hierarchies, much like humans do. Essentially, the lobsters battle it out. They battle each other. And whoever wins is the top lobster, of course. Makes sense. Battle royale exactly. lobsters. Oh I like God. it. Essentially, what's interesting about the dominance hierarchy of lobsters is... When two lobsters battle it out, of course there's going to be a victor and there's going to be a loser. But what's interesting is sometimes the victor is left severely scarred or weakened by the battle, leaving room okay. for another lobster who perhaps wouldn't have beaten him beforehand to rise up now that he's in his weakened state and take out the lobster and, and thus becoming the top okay. lobster. Interesting, no? Yeah. You know, now now all I'm picturing is me becoming like an award winning author and I just wrote an epic like in the style of the Odyssey or the Epic of Gilgamesh, but it's only about the dominance hierarchies for lobsters. That would be Right. Now that that would be something. That could possibly work out. <laughs> I mean <laughs> it could I possibly think work it could out. Maybe work out. That... You know, I I think it would be weird enough that people would think this is this this is something that I'll remember. You know, the epic of dominance lobster. I you know it makes I'll it's a memorable. It. One thing I do I'll have to on say on about it. the one thing about an epic though is I don't think anyone in our society today has that. Well, I mean, there might be some people, but I don't think many people have the attention span to read an epic. Oh man, have you guys not read uh, the Odyssey? I've read nope. the Iliad. I wish or I the Epic of Gilgamesh. Even man, come on, guys. I want to Am have. I, the only one? I want to be able to say I have read them, but I am not able to say that. I've read the Odyssey. <sighs> the Epic of Gilgamesh isn't even that. It's just long. a big poem, right? Great Babylonian tale. It, it, an epic is is really just a long poem chronicling a journey or a quest. You know, and the Epic of Gilgamesh isn't even that long. Last I checked. I think Beowulf also can be classified as an epic, and I love Beowulf, one of you my know, favorite stories of all time. It doesn't actually take that long to read. I'd highly I've read recommend Beowulf. it. I read it this year, actually. Okay. Polo, what about you? Well, I, I, I'm I not literate, pretty much. Um, so. You know what's okay. interesting? So <laughs> I'm Polo just was not saying literate. How, uh, you know, people probably wouldn't really read epics, and I think that's true. We wouldn't really read it. I think reading is becoming a, unfortunately, becoming a thing of the past. It's sad, but... At least a to lost extent, art, because you know I still know a lot of people that love reading. But I think what's interesting is like movies like Star Wars, like the classic Star Wars. That is perhaps one of the greatest epics yeah. of the modern era. Like 
if you look at it that's right like get beyond the the aliens and just the sci-fi-ness of it and it's like this awesome like space opera is how it's been described over and over yeah, again space opera it is it's it pulls from like the greatest stories the greatest motifs it's just it's great it's a great time and i think that's part of why so many people love star wars so I don't think, you know, we probably wouldn't read the epic, but if you were to make an amazing movie as original yet epic as Star Wars, that would be really You're well. saying that the epic is, uh, you know, what, what was once the oral tradition has now, has, trans, has, has transformed into the literary tradition, and you're saying that the epic once again is going through an, a transition period. Well, and it's now going to become I, a visual tradition. I think, I think it just the epic is a story essentially. Yes. And how we tell stories as a society progresses, that's inevitable. Yes. So we it used to be oral, then more and more people learned how to write and read yeah. over thousands of years. So we were able to tell stories through that means. And then suddenly it's like a lot of, in a, a very short amount of time we're able to create movies and shows and then even faster perhaps an even better way of of telling stories because you can see it and hear it hmm. and it's almost like you're part of it there you go and so the story so the stories don't change okay but just the way we tell them does yeah all right well, that's cool you know we should maybe well, start looking famous. into epics one thing i wanted lobsters. to say was <laughs> if an i i'm not very uh, experienced with that ep- epics kid but uh or greedy but yeah. epics i believe are <laughs> meant to teach a lesson are they not uh yeah uh, I, I, so. I i i i i don't believe so i like looking back well at i think the, inevitably if he looking back at the odyssey i can't find the lesson in there uh there there well, are some well, well sort of mm, what what would if you, you have say a, a, have you read the odyssey grady well, i've uh i've read parts of the odyssey okay i've read enough to know the story but what okay. i think is if you have this epic this this story that defines a hero and then inevitably you will have a sort of teaching of values, right? Because if you have this great hero, then that's what society deems as the most admirable of characters. So really it, it does teach a lesson of how the kind of traits that you should strive seek. towards. Exactly. To be a hero. And it even shows specifically in the Odyssey, it shows the follies of even our greatest heroes like Odysseus. He's this great heroic person who fought in, in the wars in the Iliad, but mm-hmm. he goes on this long quest, and partly because of his pride, he becomes lost, S- stranded, and he's gone at for sea. ten years. Yep. Yeah, and then or, sorry, I think it was fourteen. I don't even know. Yeah, sorry yeah. to spoil this for anyone, but in order to reclaim his his kingdom, he has to go to the the lowest rung of society and disguise himself as this like this A homeless beggar, person. I believe so. It was, it's like yeah. this in order to reclaim his great heroicness he has to go to the to the most the mo- the form that the basest most form of humanity. humanity exactly he has to mm-hmm. develop a sense of humility in order to become a king so that's a lesson i think you know uh you know actually now that i'm now that i'm looking at the other epics i've read i i could see an argument for the lesson you know uh beowulf has a sort of a pagan christian tradition behind it you know it it not only is it just the values of the hero right there's there's also uh something like you know a lot of the times like his sword will break like in the in the actual story Mm -hmm. and they mention it as like your, your sword broke because you trusted in the power of the sword and of yourself instead of the power of god you know i think that's interesting if if it wants to teach that sort of pagan christian morality as it was in like the 1100s when the tale first emerged but uh polo i think you wanted to say something okay going back to what i originally was asking about the lesson part of it i think the the and you guys talking about how the oral tradition of storytelling or um epics has changed i think what is cha- for at least in my own opinion i think what's changed is how people want to learn those lessons um why people want to read or why why they're going to read a book read read an epic like odysseus all right mm-hmm. i think back then i think in the past people have wanted to people learn that 
like that lesson from an epic through the epic but in my opinion i think people want to know what they're going to learn and have it taught to them straightforward in literature now you know a lot of books now are self-development like specific you know like i have i have a few books here about how to improve yourself on my desk right now so i think yeah and i, I think what's changed is people want to want to learn and they want to know that how know what they're learning rather than an epic where you're you get the lesson from the story as opposed to you know and perhaps that was sort of a necessity at the time that is to say like today we it's so many people are very well educated right all three of us here have I've been very have been educated for thirteen years. You know, we, we all graduated college. Oh, not, not college, I wish. But Sorry. Back in like, the days of <laughs> the Odyssey, when that was first being told, you have people who have nothing. They don't know the world like we know it today. And so, the best way I think for them to learn was through these great stories that they could relate to and they could easily understand. So, I think there is sort of that transition of how we learn because today it's easier for people to understand those broader concepts that Polo was sort of talking about in and directly learning, not just learning it through a story. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think, I think as, as a society, as we become more educated, we, we may become less reliant on stories to learn lessons. Yeah. Cause what I see is the Epic was both the like very almost, I want to say specific, no uh, specific lessons like you should act in such such and such way but now we kind of see that split off where we have books about oh you should you you should p- and integrate this into your life and then you have the story which is just a story in its of in and of itself you know like star wars or other other yeah. movies and such i think so they've kind of split off i think so i think i think it's i think there's some validity there i just think i just think it's interesting that you have the same, ultimately, the same stories being told over and over again, just with different characters. You know, I think we all, all three of us at least, know of the, the various hero archetypes and the symbolisms of all that vary from culture yeah. to culture. But this, the same, ultimately, the same meaning and the same story and the same characters. Like, that's to say, Luke Skywalker is the same hero storyline as Jesus Christ. And that's, you know, there's a, I could develop on that a lot right now, but that would take a long time to develop on. Yeah. Who was that guy? Uh, uh, Campbell and the hero's journey, right? You guys know about that. I know about Campbell the hero archetype storyline. Oh, you guys don't yeah. know about this? Oh, well. Oh, Is that you guys so I know about the, the, the storyline thing, but. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. I might, I may or may not know it. I just I don't know. The name. Have you guys never learned the hero's journey? Is that Wait, is that where he starts? Uh, I, 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 I really I feel like isolated. you should have. His, a lot of times his parents are dead. He he He's unique in some way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know this. Yeah, you know. I just didn't know the name yeah. Campbell. Yeah, I... there's... A, no, the guy uh, Campbell, he came up with this. There's a lot of... It's like the monomyth, right? Which, like, if you, if you guys look at the... Um, uh, the Latin roots for that mono meaning one and then myth is myth or story, right? It's really interesting to study this because once you understand that the, the, the aspects of this, you can apply it to so many things. There's really a lot of things like it, it, it's interesting to see how he looks at different world stories and world like cultures and sees that these common traits are present in all of their myths and legends right you could see it in um moses and uh jesus Mm -hmm. right you could see that but you can also see it in a story of buddha like the original buddha you can even see it in uh the matrix like that movie that came out it was actually in that it was interesting really 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 cool to see but i'm just i'm just learning about this at this point across generations across thousands of years of storytelling you have the same you have the same ultimate meaning and the same characters and you know it sort of shows like how original are we uh as a species yeah. but either way it's cool you know 
I mean, I, you know, I still and think I, we have originality. Yo, Polo, go ahead. And I want, I wanted to say, you know, that comes back to the what I said about the, it splitting off. I think, I, I think as a society, people already know that storyline, so they just want to hear an extension of it's, the storyline or a different twist on it. Familiar for them to. But if if you're yeah. trying to in, in, insert your message, your lesson into it, might as well just tell them the lesson like straight I straightforward i feel like people want to be mm -hmm. entertained like in a familiar way yeah. which is why the monument and, is so you know popular i hate to i guess it's a great conversation but like all of the greatest I, I stories know. there's the ending of the journey and i think we're just about coming up to the to the end of our time here for the episode we've had some some very great discussions here very very varying they varied in 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 theme and very good um, discussion today very, yeah, very fantastic for sure you know but i think i think there's an ultimate lesson to be learned here i don't know exactly what it is but ultimately we all know that to close this almonds are the superior nut i can't believe you said this but <laughs> all right you know well, it was either almonds <laughs> or peanuts you know <sighs> i still like cashews the best guys okay all right. you know, fast foods as long as fast food mission statements mission i think they're as they're long as they are working somewhat accurate we, <laughs> we gotta appreciate it it just depends on what you want for your company you know and the dominance hierarchy of lobsters and epics Who no, a, guys, a 45 I, minute journey i think we've gone on our own hero's journey in this episode i think we have a 45 minute journey we had the call were to we adventure. reborn were, do we, we all feel like we were reborn threshold, right challenges temptations it's just i i don't know if we were reborn i i, I feel I don't know. that i, I was like... reborn i think fingers crossed at the next episode if i was to be reborn in the next episode it would be even better fantastic even yes. better guys listen all right we'd like to thank our faithful audience of probably 30 people for coming with well, hope, us hopefully on 30 this hero's for this journey episode. hopefully 30 people for coming with us on this if we journey. can get 30 we'll post a <laughs> A 30, 30, uh, 30, 30 audience. 30, 30 followers uh, special. <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed. But, uh, be on the lookout for that next episode. Thanks for tuning in to these to this almost an hour of rambling. We hope you learned or took something away from it. Hope you, we enlightened you. Yeah. So so thank you. And uh, all right. with that, I'll, I'll hand over, I'll hand over the mic. Have a fantastic day, guys. And this was... Speakeasies episode one. Hope you guys enjoyed.